And today we're going to be dissecting sharks. And this is my interpretation of the shark, okay? This is the head, by the way. Uh, the pectoral fins, the pelvic fins are down here. This is the body. This is where all the fun stuff is, okay? In order to get into that, you're going to make an incision down here, cut up to just above where the pectoral fins are, cut across this way, cut across this way, cut across this way, cut across this way, and it will open up like a book. And I'm going quick. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> He's a professional. I've, I've, I've dissected probably, oh, 500 to 1,000 sharks over the years, so... Mm -hmm. Well, and, 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 and I mean, these are this this blade has gone through a lot of shark skin. It's the same one I've been using since the beginning, but the blade does get duller over over time too. But it, when you're cutting through the bigger ones, got a lot of cartilage too. Okay, there you go. Cool. <laughs> now we are open and ready to observe. Um, it is not just for processing stuff internally, but also it is its flotation device. The liver is filled with those oils, which what keeps the shark from just sinking. Think about it. It does not have an air bladder like most fish do. So it has these huge livers. Now, in the case of this guy, their livers are at least 20% of their internal anatomy, if not more. Move it so it's on the outside of your shark. So you have to just pull her out to the side. I think it already is on the outside. I can't pick it up. It's too slippery. Just slip your hand in it and pull. There you go. There. Hey. That's the liver. You got to get it farther out. You got to get it out. Big liver. The bigger the shark, the bigger the liver. Do not cut it out. We're not removing it. There is a medial lobe, and connect to that medial lobe, you will see the gallbladder. The medial lobe, yeah, for you guys. Ooh. Oh, here we go. There Over here. See the green? Oh. The next thing that could have something interesting in it is the digestive system. The digestive system starts off at the mouth. Up behind where the heart is, there's going to be an esophagus, which will lead into the stomach. That's what the first thing is you're really going to be able to see. If you open up your stomach and there is, it is not fat, what you will see is rugae, which the rugae are the ridges inside the stomach. If your stomach is full, no rugae, because it's been expanded and the rugae has been flattened. The rugae are designed to increase the areas for digestion, okay? So, when you cut open your stomach, you might see some interesting stuff. The next thing is it goes down into the small intestine. Our small intestine, 20 plus feet. It's small intestine, not even a foot, okay? Um, it then moves into the spiral valve, spiral valve intestine, which you'd think that's the large intestine, but actually that is the area where most of your absorption occurs. If you think of a spiral staircase, a really big spiral staircase, that's basically the way the food moves through its spiral valve intestine. Again, increased surface area. Okay, that's the rugae of the ridges. Can you guys see the gray triangle? The gray triangle. That is the spleen. Oh, the gray triangle is the spleen. What <laughs> kind of questioning is that if it's truly a four-chambered heart? And uh, I'm one of the scientists that believes three, and there's others that believe four, so it really is up to debate a little bit. Okay. Farther, farther, farther. Last but not least. Paul. Baby time. Okay. These are really big eggs, which is possible that we're going to find lots of little embryos, or we might find more. But this morning, we actually had sharks, which actually had some development on them. Okay, so you never really know what you're going to see. Okay, these are clearly eggs, and they have an embryo right there. That is your baby shark. Notice the yolk significantly smaller. Okay. Got a lot of yolk, got a little yolk.